So therefore, instantaneous acceleration, uh, which is A, is will be given by dv dt. Now, you're going to note that uh, acceleration is either the first derivative, right, of velocity. That means that is dv, A is dv dt. But remember, remember that our velocity here, right, the change in the velocity here, remember we got a v as a d what? It was ds. Right. Um, let me first wrap that. I uh, see this pen of mine is quite disturbing. So we shall have uh, the S right here. What was happening? D T, right? So we shall have the S D T as our velocity. So when we uh, when we come and put this into uh, this equation, realize that uh, acceleration is as well as the second derivative of displacement, which is A being equal to ds squared dt squared. Because if we substitute this into this, it will be ds squared because the d and in this v will be ds, ds, right? But the d and d get squared, we have, that's why we have ds squared dt squared. So now you have to note that acceleration is either the first derivative of velocity or acceleration is the second derivative of displacement. Please make sure that that is known by you. All right. Okay. So now let's also uh, continue now to deduce uh, some of the things that we've said. So not, not that, that the differential relationship involving displacement, uh, velocity, and uh, acceleration along a straight path is given by A is the same as the S, right? Remember, from what we've just deduced, we say that the A is the same as the S, which is equal to V dV, right? That means that uh, from here we can have a relationship that we have that acceleration uh, times the change in the distance, the same as, uh, sorry, in the displacement is the same as velocity times the change in velocity. Right. So now, having known that, having known that, that means that if we multiply acceleration times a uh, distance, I mean the displacement, it will be the same as uh, multiplying the velocity uh, times the change in velocity. All this uh, is very important. Uh, mark this, and this is where we are going to derive most of the other equations later on. So now, the note number two is that the, the three important equations of kinematics are. First of all, is velocity, right? So which is uh, the change uh, of, uh, of displacement over time. This is very important. We are going to use it in this equation. This is the major equation, which you guys all have to know that ADS is the same as VDV. This is where we're going to create most of other equations, uh, which we all know as Newton's laws of motions. They will come through here uh, of motion, right? So now I also have uh, the second one, that acceleration, which is a uh, change in velocity over the change in time. This should be also noted. But now the last one is, which is very important, that acceleration uh, times the change in distance is the same as V, D, V, right? Why? Because in acceleration we have time and in velocity we have time. So that's how those things cancels in. And then that's how we have that ADS is the same as V, D, V. Right. So now please make sure that that is well understood and that is well noted by you because we're going to use that to derive some more other equations. Now, all right. Now let's go to constant acceleration. Right. Let's start with constant acceleration. We're noting that when, uh, you're noting that uh, when the acceleration is constant, right? When acceleration is constant, that means that uh, if if each, sorry, if acceleration is constant, each of the previous three kinematic equations, right, can be integrated to obtain formulas that, uh, that are going to relate uh, the uh, constant acceleration, that are going to tell us about velocity, that are going to tell us about the displacement, and also that are going to give us uh, the time that is taken, right, uh, within uh, that uh, uh, constant acceleration. So these formulas will be used in problems that are related to constant acceleration because we are going to be uh, handling examples and we are going to need these uh, uh, formulas. First of all, 
Let's look at velocity as a function of time. How do we obtain velocity as a function of time? Remember, we said velocity uh, is, uh, is the what? Uh, velocity is a change in distance over time. But also remember, we said that acceleration, uh, which we gave acceleration, is the change in velocity over time time right i'm not going to write this i'm going to just uh deduce and uh you guys can uh, continue with the videos that i sent they will be able to explain to you more vividly about this so assuming that initially the velocity v is v naught right when t is equal to zero meaning that as a particle moves the initial velocity was v naught when at a time which is given by T. Then when we apply your mathematical principles, so now if we know that our, remember from here, SA acceleration, uh, constant acceleration is given by the change in velocity over time. So now if we make, uh, uh, we make velocity uh, as, a sub, uh, as our subject here, we realize that dV is the same as uh, AC dt, right? So now when we have that equation, which is dV is the same as AC dt, now if we integrate uh, with respect boundary principles, uh, boundary conditions that we are given, for example, we are integrating from V, which when, the velocity, when the particle has initial velocity V0 to a velocity which is V, and also since acceleration is constant, we are move sorry, it's constant, which is AC, right, with respect to time, and this particle moved from uh, a time which is from V0 to a time which is zero to a V, uh, which is at covering a time which is T. Therefore, implying that our final velocity, if we integrate dV, we are getting V, right? And if we integrate uh, this, we shall, get, we shall have AC, right? We shall have AC, right? Uh, and then, uh, right? And uh, we shall have... Uh, when we integrate this, we shall have uh, uh, an equation, and then after inter uh, after uh, in putting in a boundary equation, which is zero to t, I believe you guys understand the mathematics. I'm not going to go into that simple mathematics, but I'll just deduce the final equation that after we put in a boundary equation or a boundary conditions, which is zero and t, our final equation will be v naught right plus a c right t right. So that's what we are going to uh, apply. So that means that you know, or here we are going to have our V is equal to a C T, right? Somewhere there, right? Somewhere there. And then when we put in zero and T, that's when we come to V naught plus A T plus, I mean, A, -T, a, -A -S -C T, right? So this is our equation one. And we've been doing this from our physics, from our uh, higher, higher, higher diplomas, as well as in our advanced level we should be knowing this equation one so now let's look at position as a function of time by integrating remember we said that velocity is the same as ds dt but remember we have our equation here recall from equation one our v is the same as v naught right plus plus ac this is our equation one remember so now, since we have our equation one, and now we're assuming that initially the particle is going to move from a, 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 a distance, which is S naught, right, when T is zero. So that means we are going to integrate. Instead of uh, uh, our V, we are going to use ds dt, right? So now we are going to integrate this equation here with respect to time. So now when we integrate that, that means that our ds, when we are substituting our v with the yes dt, so the dt will go the other side. So now we are integrating from s naught from our initial distance, which is uh, 0 to s, and then ds, this is integrate equation 1 with respect to time, and we are moving from time 0 to time t. Therefore, you realize that we shall get our displacement, our distance, our position, or the final position being equal to initial position plus uh, when we multiply the initial velocity times uh, the time given plus a half a t squared, right? So this is going to be equation number two, and this is very important. Equation one, remember, is also very important. Right. Now let's find the find other, uh, which is the velocity as a function of position. How do we relay, relate uh, velocity with um, position? Because that's also very important. Now we can either do substitution 
uh, we can relate equation one and equation two and then do substitution, right? Because we are interested in how does velocity uh, relate with, uh, uh, with, with, the, with the displacement. So that means we have to eliminate acceleration. So now you realize that uh, uh, we can either uh, solve for P in equation one and substitute into equation two, or perhaps we can integrate uh, equation three, which we said uh, equation three was uh, VDV is the same as ACDS, right? So assuming that initially the velocity is equal to uh, v, v naught, right? When uh, S is S not at the origin, right? When the particle was moving. Then when we go to this equation three, right here that I'm circling here. So if we go to integrate that, that means that uh, um, we are integrating uh, VDV and uh, ASDS, right? And we're moving from V naught to V. And also we are moving from S naught, which is the ori original to uh, um, uh, and the final distance, which is s. Therefore, when you integrate this, we shall have uh, v squared is the same as v naught squared plus 2ac into s minus s naught, and this becomes our uh, equation 3. That means that uh, uh, we have a relationship between uh, velocity as well as with displacement, right? So now all, yeah, the final distance, right? Or the final position. So now we are going to look at and find an example what we just done probably uh, that will help us uh, uh, get these things easier, right? Okay, so let's look at, uh, before. I think before we look at an example, let's first deduce this first uh, five important deductions. First of all, uh, uh, dynamics is concerned with bodies that have acceler accelerated motion. Uh, also, speed refers to the magnitude of velocity. Remember, because we say its speed is the product of uh, distance times time, right? Average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the total time. This is the uh, this is the this is the different. This is the dif sorry. This is different from the average velocity, which is the displacement divided by time, right? So also, and we there's uh, an aspect called average speed, which is the total dis distance traveled divided by the total time, which is that is the average speed, right? And then a particle that is slowing down is decelerating, okay? If something is, uh, you're, you're driving your car and you've been moving from fast speed and then you're going to a slow speed, we call that decelerating, right? And then a particle can have an acceleration. Yes, a particle can have an acceleration and it have zero velocity, right? You can do that. But for example, if you put your car, you parked your car, and then you, 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 you've you engaged in the parking gears, and, and and then you start on your, your engine, and then place on your pedal of acceleration, you realize that uh, uh, you're still in parking, and you've accelerated, but there is, um, the engine is on, it's moving fast, but there is zero velocity. That means it's not moving because you're already in part, right? So that's a simple deduction right there. All right. So now uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, an example, but let's have a break.